All right, what's up, guys? Um, this question is all about figuring out as much as we can about a rational function without actually graphing it. So the given information is that there's a hole at x equals negative 2. So what we have to do is we have to use that negative 2, x equals negative 2, to help us factor this. Because if there's a hole at negative 2, that means if we plug in negative 2, we're going to get, you can try it if you want, but on the top you're going to get 0, and on the bottom you're also going to get 0. Because it's a hole, that's the definition of a hole. Okay? So if plugging in negative 2 to a polynomial means that you get 0, and there's a polynomial on top and a polynomial on bottom, that means that you can factor out x plus 2 from the polynomial, and you'll have some quadratic left over. On bottom, we'll also be able to factor out x plus 2, and we'll have some quadratic left over. So to factor it, we use this trick called synthetic division that's going to let us plug in negative 2 and see what's left over to factor out the x plus 2. So what we do is we take the coefficients of the uh, polynomial, Okay, and we can do that with the denominator, too. So we go negative 2. I see it's 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay, So then synthetic, you drop down the 1. We're going to do negative 2 times 1, and we're going to get negative 2. Negative 8 plus negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 2 times negative 10 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. Negative 2 times 21 is negative 42. So then we're happy because that's going to be 0. Okay. And then we can do the same thing. Well, so first let's see what we have left over now. So what we did, and this is the biggest thing people forget, is you forget that you have x plus 2 out front here. What's left over? We have 1x squared minus 10x plus 21. So we have x squared minus 10x plus 21. Okay, and that's good news because we can easily factor that now. We get x plus 10, 2 times. We're looking for something that adds to negative 10 and multiplies to positive 21. We know they're both going to need to be negative because they add to a negative and multiply to a positive. So we get x minus 7, x minus 3, x plus 2. So that's our numerator. Let's do our denominator. So again, drop down the 1, negative 2, get negative 5, positive 10, positive 4, negative 8, happy once again. All right, I'll give him like blue hair this time. Okay, so now what we have is we have 1x squared minus 5x plus, oops, I didn't mean to put the 5 again, 5x plus 4. So what we have then is we have x plus 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 4. And then we have x plus 2, numbers that add to negative four, 5 but multiply to positive 4. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means we have our numerator and our denominator factored now. So our new function, it's not our new function, we've just rewritten it in a different form, is our numerator... And then that's divided by our denominator. Okay, so now we have to find all the things it's asking for. Um, first of all, we know that we have zeros. Zeros are on top. They just make the output of the function zero. So those happen at x equals 7 and x equals 3. Okay, those come from these factors right here. Then let's pull out vertical asymptotes, VAs. These are vertical lines that the graph is going to approach and like shoot off to positive or negative infinity because we're dividing by increasingly smaller numbers. We're dividing by zero. It's only on bottom. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals 4. And that comes from these factors. And then to find our whole... Our hole happens, we already know it's at negative 2, but we have to do some extra work to figure out the y value. And these are causing the hole 
the x plus 2 factors, but they're not affecting the graph otherwise, right? Because they cancel each other out. The only thing they're doing to the graph is causing a hole at negative 2 instead of a point. So what we do is we just plug in negative 2 to the other factors because these are the factors that are determining what the graph looks like because they don't cancel each other out. So we're going to plug in negative 2 to those guys. We get negative 2 minus 7 and then negative 2 minus 3 and that's over negative 2 minus 1 and negative 2 minus 4. Okay. So then, what does that end up being? It's negative 9 times negative 5, which is 45. And then we get negative 3 times negative 6, which is 18. So 45 18, if you do that in a calculator, is going to be 2.5. So our whole is at negative 2, 2.5. Okay, the last thing we want to do is look for horizontal asymptotes, because it, that's the last thing it asked for. And, or one of the things it asked for. And so what we have to do is we look at the degree of the function because horizontal asymptotes are all about what happens at infinity. And this is how you think about this. If you plug in infinity, infinity cubed is so much bigger compared to the rest of this that it doesn't matter anymore. And infinity cubed, same thing here. This, the rest of this doesn't even matter. All that we're worried about is the biggest degree because uh, on an infinite scale, the biggest degree is going to dominate everything else. Now, since they have this, the biggest degree is the same on top as it is on bottom, they're going to be, quote unquote, as big as each other, which means they're going to cancel each other out. So all that's going to be left over is 1. So if you want to really think about this, what we have is we're going to have infinity cubed, and then the rest of it doesn't matter because infinity cubed is so big, over infinity cubed, right? And then they basically cancel each other out, so then what do we have left over? We have that our function is approaching 1. Okay, now if there were like coefficients out in front of this, like let's say that was a 3 and that was a 2, then it would happen at 3 halves. But because the coefficients are just 1, it's going to happen at 1 over 1, which is just 1. So we can add that into our key features and say we have a horizontal asymptote, and that happens at y equals 1 because the degree is the same on top as it is on bottom. Oh, also we can add in that we know these zeros are crossing zeros because their multiplicity is just 1. See how there's no exponent? The exponent is just 1 here. So that means it must be crossing. If it were a 2, it would be bouncing. So then the last thing you can do is you can just sketch something really quick because you want to match up with the correct graph in the next question. So let's sketch in our vertical asymptotes. 1 is at 1. And then 1 is at 4. We have a crossing zero at three, cross, and we have, a cr uh, we have another zero over here at seven. I'm gonna be a little bit stuck here. One sec, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, barely fit it on there. Cross is right there too. And then we also know we have a hole at negative two, 2.5, so why don't we throw that in there as well? Okay, so that's like right there. So when we're looking for the correct, oh, and then we have a horizontal asymptote at one too, so let's put that in there. When we're looking for the correct graph, we want to find something that matches all this stuff. So let me pause and go grab those graphs really quick so we can look at them. Okay, so here are our graphs to choose from. Now, we notice a couple things. First of all, they both these two graphs both have vertical asymptotes at 1 and 4. Okay, It looks like this one does too. It has one at 1 and it has one at 4. Okay, so the vertical asymptotes aren't helping us out, but this one has a zero at negative two, right? At negative two, we're at zero. On ours, at negative two, we have a hole up here, okay? And then uh, we also, uh, we also notice that this graph over here has a zero at two, three, and seven. We only have two zeros. Ours happened at three and seven, not at two. So that one's no good. This one's correct because we have our correct vertical asymptotes, we have our correct zeros, we are at, at negative two, we're positive, all these other ones at negative two, this one's negative, at negative two, this one's zero, and we know we need to be positive because we have our hole right there. We have our horizontal asymptote at one. And the other thing we can check is the y-intercept. So right here we have zero, 5.25, right? Well, if we plug in zero for x, all these cancel, and we get 42 over eight, and that is equal to 5.25. So it's also the correct y-intercept, and that's another thing we can check. But that's the full thing done.